Hello everybody, we're back with Retire Earlier and Better at Home or Abroad, whatever you like better. And we're going to continue with our fun expat news flash, right? Yeah. <laughs> we got some goodies for you today. What's on the, uh, the agenda today? Well, today the first news flash is about Amazon. Guess where Amazon is now? They're in Israel. Can thought, you believe that? I thought you were going to say Amazon is in the Amazon. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> what? Israel? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're in Israel and all the American expats in Israel, there's quite a few of them. There's a lot of them there, uh, are just loving it now because they couldn't get things before. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of things they couldn't get. And now with Amazon, there it is. And I guess the stuff's really cheap too. Well, for some reason it doesn't shock me because I've, I've read so many things about Israel being really built up and just the idea that Amazon's there and that's a new thing just doesn't seem to, it's like, oh, okay, you know, I mean, I thought they were already there, but apparently not. So yeah, good news. Great. Yeah, we yeah. like Amazon. And it's not, and you know what, you take this for granted when you're in the States and there's all this yeah. hubbub about going abroad, which is which is great. There's a lot of great things about it, but uh, you know, we take things for granted. And the reason is because we don't understand that when we go abroad, we can't get the stuff we're used to getting. And there, that's why Amazon is such good news if you can get uh, if you can get uh, things from Amazon because it doesn't that's matter right. if, they, if they produce it locally or not or if it's too expensive or, or what have you uh, you can just uh, order it from Amazon so that's a big deal yeah so yeah. Israel you know if mm -hmm. that was on your agenda now you can get some Amazon good to know Let's go to Israel. <laughs> Let's go to Israel for I Amazon. spend money almost every month on Amazon. There's always something I've got to get. And you know what? You get kind of accustomed to it, too. You know, it's easy to just order and it comes right to your door and you don't have to hunt the product down, you know, and shop around and all that kind of stuff. It's really so, good here in Italy. Yeah. All right. Okay. And the next news flash is about Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. Oh, is it, it Dublin or, or Dublin? I think it depends on how you talk. <laughs> yeah, it depends on if, if you're from there. <laughs> Dublin, Ireland has been named the worst city in the world for expats to find a place to live. And this is in the second year in a row. And the reason why is, you should know this. Well, it's too expensive. It is. It's so expensive. I understand that if you if you get away from Dublin and try to go east, it's really it gets really kind of uh, less expensive. Kind of, it's less expensive, but it's it's out in the stick. You know? oh. So yeah, Dublin, Ireland. I don't know if that was on your radar, but uh, that's. Oh wait, Amazon. I found out a while back ago that the Amazon came from England, and after the Brexit, that added more import costs to be able to order things from from Amazon in Dublin. So this is just adding on top of the uh, on top of everything, you know, with the Brexit and the cost and everything. All right, well Dublin wasn't on our radar. But, well, uh, the good news is though Dublin has been ranked second for best jobs and careers for expats. All right, and our next news flash is about Taiwan. Expats have spoken. This is much more believable because in 2019, from expats have rated Taiwan as the best country to live, according to all the, you know, the lifestyle and the, you know, the quality of life, the cost of living, the weather, everything. So this is not a private entity no. acting as a central Wizard of Oz telling everyone, go here, go there, you know, and do this. This is the expats themselves, which is, uh, you know, I mean, it's very notable. I mean, you, know, you still have to be careful even with that. But uh, it's interesting to note what they said, that they said Taiwan. Mm -hmm. I am enthused. I'm, 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 I'm tickled that they said that it's Taiwan. It's now, it's Taiwan. Because, you know, I know that uh, we were looking into Taiwan 10 years ago, and it sounded really interesting back then. 
but uh, it was probably a lot less expensive than it is today too. Yeah, yeah. And I think the city that's been named is is it is it called Tempai or Tempai or something? Tempe. 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 Yeah. Tempe. I, I think mm -hmm. it was is that, that the city. capital. I don't know. If that... But uh, yeah, it's got good weather, and uh, I'm sure you can get everything that. Um, China makes. <laughs> you probably have really good food. If you like Asian food, Taiwan is probably, mm -hmm. probably have Sounds it. good. Yeah. Got to put that on our list. This was interesting. That's why we've got it here. One in five American expats are planning to give up their citizenship. Did I say American expats? One, one in, in five. One in five are planning? Where does that come from? Um, this is according to international investment. And the reason why is because of FATCA laws. The uh, U.S. is one of the countries where when you move abroad you have to pay taxes on your worldwide income. Hmm. It sounds, I'm skeptical about this because, um, you know, you've seen these uh, newsletters talking about this subject for years and uh, saying how the number of people giving up their citizenship is, uh, you know, just uh, blown up and this and that. And when you look at the figures, you're looking at, you know, a thousand people or something like that, 1,100 people, and that's like less than 0.0001% of the millionaires in America, not even the whole population. The, the, the millionaire population is already less than, less than 10% of, of the U.S. population. So when you zero in on the millionaire population, because I'm thinking that's who would do it, but I'm sure mm -hmm. that there's other reasons why people might want to uh, might want to do it. Actually, there's a lot of people that are middle class retired Americans that are uh, that are having problems going abroad with uh, just just all the taxes they have to pay. Mm -hmm. Just it's the middle class that uh, really have to pay pay the most taxes and and the ones that have pensions and on top of Social Security, and then uh, they tend to want to move to somewhere that they, they want to move to, not a place where they have to move to in order to save on taxes. And when they do that, they end up paying just a tremendous amount more more taxes, and their life gets more complicated because of uh, tax returns, paperwork, compliance, and all this kind of thing. So actually, I could, I could see where a large number of middle class expat Americans would want to make some kind of a change on that, but I'm not certain that middle class America is ready to entertain the idea of, you know, ditching their, their U.S. citizenship. Well, it's, I, it says here that in the beginning of the 2019, the first three months, over a thousand Americans renounced their citizenship. And they were probably, like you said, middle class and, and the wealthier because of the fat cap. Well, again, that number is so tiny that it's insignificant. Usually I find that the people that put out this information have a kind of agenda that they're trying to promote and establish, and it's usually a move abroad, live abroad uh, you know, agenda for some reason or other. It's the information age, but that doesn't mean that the information you get is going to be unbiased. So that's, uh, that's an issue with the information age is cutting through, and that's what we do on this channel is we cut through a lot of that unbiased information and that's part of what we do on this uh, expat news flash so yeah I'm skeptical of it so let us know what you think in the comments do you have any good news flashes hon I'm done with my Are you news plumb flashes out? I'm, I'm out I've got an interesting piece here it's a city in Indonesia I can't pronounce it it's like Surabaya you know where they they passed these rules where it is now possible to pick up plastic and use it as fare on public transportation, which is just mind-bogglingly amazing to me. That's a neat idea. One of the things you definitely notice when you go abroad is the amount of plastic all over the ground. And, it, you know, I mean, they could easily institute this in a lot of places that we have lived. You know, no names mentioned because we're not picking on anybody, but I think this is an excellent, excellent idea. Imagine going down the street, walking down the street, like in Salinas, Ecuador, somewhere, or Panama, or on the you know coastal Panama, and looking at all that plastic garbage, and instead of kind of looking at it and going, hmm, ah, you'd be like, hey, free bus fare. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's a really yeah, great idea. Stuff your backpack and uh, just uh, get on get on the bus. It would be. I think it's a truly amazing and. Uh, and so they they have a, a, a two prong uh, goal with this thing. It's uh, it's not just to reduce the garbage, but it's also to reduce, uh, well here in Indonesia anyway, the number of vehicles on the road. So oh, I yeah. haven't been there to Indonesia, and but I uh, imagine that if they have an awful lot of vehicles on the road, that I can understand why they. This is a perfect solution. It just it just takes care of both issues all at once. I know a lot of places they just sweep it up like in Quito they tend to even if they it gets if it takes them a day or two to get to it they do sweep it. And the mm -hmm. same thing in Italy they do uh, you know sweep it. Another piece of uh, news is that there's a Chilean community is it Chilean or Chilean? It's however you talk. Ah yes <laughs> Chilean. Okay <laughs> just like that town in Bulgaria where you say yes no, wait, this was in uh, the Himalayas where you ask people a question and they say they shake yes and no at the same time so that you don't really know which one it is because they probably don't really know. <laughs> okay, but this Chilean community requires residents to have their appendix removed before they can move there. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, this has nothing to do with you get in the physical and you need an appendix. This has to do with, this is a very extreme weather location in Antarctica. It's an island off of Antarctica. So it's extremely blizzardy and blizzardy and frozen. Ships can't even come in. Emergency helicopters can't take off in these blizzard conditions. The doctor that's there on hand can't handle emergencies. It's, it's sort of a, a prevention a system where they don't really want to have to deal with somebody needing emergency care and not being able to provide it because of the extreme conditions that they have. But this is funny because, to me, because I mean, how many other conditions could you That's what I was thinking. have to sit there and preempt yourself on? I mean, why not? Why stop at appendix? Why not remove your gallbladder? Why not, uh, you know, I mean, just write down a list of all the things that you could possibly have happen to you and just have them all done. And if you survive, then you can move to this Chilean community. <laughs> They're having other issues too after they leave. They stay there a year or two. I think the temperatures are worse than in Alaska. And not just the temperatures, but the blizzard conditions. But they have a similarity to Alaska because they have like 20 hours of darkness. And then when the light comes, it's just a oh, wow. little bit, you know, so. And, and people have to pass a rigorous psycho a psychological test before they can even go there. Mm -hmm. you know? And who would want to go there? That's the whole question. Right. Who would want I'm to go there? I was thinking that same thing. It happens to be the families and uh, the Chilean Air Force uh, that, that go it's, a, it's a government outpost. So, mm -hmm. But apparently some of the people after being there for a couple of years, they have what's called a stress uh, disorder from people that go to fight in wars and then come back. Well, these people have hermetism disorder. And what is that? Well, after being in these conditions for a year or two, when they go back and they all of a sudden, they have the, all these external things coming at them like family, uh, internet, you know, they have internet, you know, just, just everything that you have in normal civilization. And it, it hits them and it's like, whoa, I'm not used to this anymore. Shock. They're in they, shock. They're in shock and they want to go back to hermitism and it's... Uh, just mm, wow. interesting uh, relativism of life that depending on what we're exposed to we kind of become a different people in a way you know mm -hmm. so it's really interesting to me yeah all right so if you like the video you know what to do and subscribe if you haven't done it yet and thanks for coming to our expat news flash if you have any expat news flashes of your own tell us about them and if you'd like us to cover them Tell us about them. Thanks for coming to our channel. Have a nice day. Ciao.